Welcome to week one of our FCAO Introduction to Philosophy course. You may work through this week at your own pace. However, some assignments may require you to respond or discuss with other members of the class online. As the course progresses and new weeks open up, you are always welcome to work ahead. Our first two weeks, you will be progressively introduced to the world of philosophy through brief history of philosophy, definitions of different areas of philosophical thought, and then a general discussion of expanding your worldview through thoughtful contemplation of life experiences. Our first goal is to define philosophy. I want you to become familiar with the nature of philosophy, to become familiar with the different areas of philosophy, and to create a definition of philosophy. Philosophy was first, before sociology, anthropology, physics, psychology, mathematics, and all of the other scientific schools separated themselves into individual sciences, there was philosophy. The Greeks were the first to document systematic definitions of their surrounding world without relying on the gods. Philosophy is the starting point for all sciences, and when studying philosophy, we should reflect on our own experiences. On Schoology, Read the following selection from Jeffrey Olson's Persons in Their World and answer the questions that follow, and then define the major philosophical schools and submit. When done, you can pause this video and come back before taking on the next lesson, The Big Questions. Welcome back, or maybe you never left. You, again, can work at your own pace. You can do all of these lessons right at the beginning of the week or the end of the week, or you can break them up as I have them broken up on this video. The big questions. I'd like to tell you I have the answers to them, but I don't. Instead, the big questions really serve as an introduction to major philosophical schools. I want you to answer these questions and to be able to articulate your beliefs around the world or about the world, to explain the reasons for why you believe what you believe and to categorize your thoughts into different schools of philosophy. One goal of philosophy is to expand your worldview. Philosophers have created their own views of the world. The need to articulate what one believes about the world is a basic component of philosophy. More importantly, yeah, you, you're not just simply expressing your beliefs. You're defining the reason for believing what you believe. Online, I want you to briefly answer the discussion questions posted and categorize your thoughts in a school of philosophy based on the schools you defined in the previous lesson. Don't worry about how long your answers are. You can even use bullet points. You're not graded on spelling. You're not graded on sentence structure. I just want you to think about these questions. And be aware that your answers are shared with the class and public with the class. I would like you guys to respectfully comment on each other's answers. Welcome back for the last lesson of the week. Philosophic Analysis. The objective is for you to be able to analyze and create philosophic dialogue and to identify hidden meanings within philosophical writings. Whenever we ponder an idea, search for an answer, explain an emotion, or engage in an argument, we are philosophers. If philosophy is so useful, then why doesn't everybody like to read and discuss philosophy? The answer is pretty simple. 
Reading philosophy is hard. It can be very difficult. Philosophers love definitions. They love to argue. They scrutinize every detail to determine if an assumption is based upon adequate evidence and is a justified true belief. They tend to be wordy. So while reading, you have to concentrate and focus on every phrase. You cannot let your mind wander or else you end up rereading and frustrated and lost. Let's look at four steps to help with philosophical analysis. First, stop the world. Your mind is flooded. There's phones and TVs and apps and what else going on? You can't catch everything around you. You can't assimilate everything around you while you're reading philosophy and incorporate it into your life. So stop, find a quiet place to read. And once you're free of distractions, decide what and how. All right, we can decide what we want to deal with and how to deal with it. And I've kind of done this for you. I'll give you reading guides and questions, preview them so you know what you're reading for, what you're looking for. And then you'll decide what is most meaningful to you and engage with that. We can't engage with everything. Step three, zero in on an idea. Give it your full attention. Sit back, take a breath, live with it for a second. Begin to look more deeply into individual ideas. Maybe the hidden meaning will show itself. Once you have that idea, step four is to think about it. You've zeroed in on it and now analyze it. That's the essence of philosophy. Don't kid yourself. This is hard to concentrate and think about individual ideas. You might not agree with this philosopher. You might think they're a moron. But try to gain some insight. Try to plug into the idea. It takes practice and hard labor and time. And I often have to go back and reread things and spend time with them. Your final assignment for the week is to read a selection from Plato's Republic. In this selection, Socrates is having a discussion with Polemarchus on the concept of justice. Unlike the narrative forms of writing we're used to, Plato writes dialogues in which discussions between people are presented without the descriptions you expect. Socrates is often the central figure of these dialogues. Read this example of Socratic dialogue online and answer the questions. And I'll see you next week. Thank you for your time.